So coming to the lateral quadrant of the ankle, we are left with peroneal tendons. Before we begin with assessment of the peroneal tendons, let's uh, revise our bony landmarks, which is your uh, lateral malleolus, the peroneal tubercle, and the base of the fifth metatarsal. Now this is a volume rendered image showing the uh, the peroneus brevis tendon and the peroneus longus tendon over here. So in the retromalleolar segment, the peroneus brevis lies anteriorly to the peroneus longus. And the peroneus brevis has a shorter course as it goes and attaches over the base of the fifth metatarsal. Whereas the peroneus longus, as it goes into the inframalleolar segment, it goes inferior to the peroneal tubercle and it goes and enters the foot. The peroneal tendon sheath consists uh, is, is a Y-shaped structure. So in the supramalleolar segment, it has a single limb, whereas as it goes down, it splits into two. So it is typically an inverted Y-shaped kind of a structure. The peroneal tendons are stabilized by the superior and inferior peroneal retinaculi, and these retinaculi prevent uh, subluxation or dislocation of the tendons. This is another diagram just to show a better de depiction. Uh, and we see the peroneus brevis, which is closer to the bone. That's the peroneus longus. This is the tendon sheath. And these are the superior and inferior peroneal retinaculi. When we take a cross section, this is what the peroneal retinaculum looks like. That's the fibula. Uh, located in the groove, we have the peroneus brevis, which is close to the bone, and the peroneus longus tendon. They are surrounded by the tendon sheath and this orange shaped uh, outline structure is a peroneal retinaculum which goes and attaches uh, you know over the fibula with the help of a fibrocartilaginous structure. So this peroneal retinaculum allows lateral subluxation or dislocation of the peroneal tendons. The peroneal tendons are evaluated uh, in the short axis so what we see over here is the fibula that's the peroneus brevis tendon close to the bone that's the peroneus longus and we still see the brevis muscle belly as we go down further we see the peroneus brevis peroneus longus and this hypoechoic structure as it attaches over the lateral malleolus is the uh, peroneal retinaculum on the long axis the peroneal tendons are seen typically as any other uh, tendons a fibrillary pattern set uh, into bundles over here that's the smooth cortex of the of the lateral malleolus as we go to the inframalleolar segment the peroneus uh, longus is seen inferior to the uh, peroneal tubercle whereas peroneus brevis is seen superior to it in this case we the peroneal tubercle is slightly shallow hence uh, really not that well seen but then this is an anatomical variant that we should all be prepared for some of the peroneal tubercles might be really prominent while some might be like almost uh, you know flat so we should know that of course uh, peroneal tendons also need to be evaluated on dynamic uh, scanning we see them uh, uh, you know while asking the patient to uh, avoid the foot and in this case we see the peroneals uh, th this is a peroneal retinaculum and we see some intrasheath subluxation of the peroneus brevis below the peroneus longus tendon. So with this, uh, the take home message would be, if you want to scan the ankle or any joint for that matter, knowledge of anatomy is a key. You should have a systematic approach and you will do a good job without getting lost anywhere. You should know about the anisotropy at various uh, levels, you know, at the attachment of the Achilles tendon, you know, where the peroneal ten tendons curve around the lateral malleolus. Focus at the site of the symptoms, you know, in musculoskeletal ultrasound, most of the times the pain, the findings are going to be at the site of the pain and use dynamic imaging wherever necessary. So uh, these are the last couple of images that I would want you to see. This is the orientation of the probe for the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament, the anterior talofibular ligament, and that's the orientation for the calcaneofibular ligament. And this is the take home slide that you need to know. Now, all these structures have been mentioned in the ESSR guidelines, hence you need to know how to evaluate them. Thank you.